you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to the Notary War Room. This is the man of the hour right here, Jalen Clark. Yes, he is one fourth of the Black Wealth Renaissance, one of the hottest podcasts that is out right now. And I am supremely honored to have this guy on here. Fascinating. Let's get it cracking, man. Let, 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 let's go. Let's go. If you guys want to stay connected with me, here is my info. It's link dot bio forward slash tiger dot toledo that's link l as in larry and as in nancy k period bio forward slash tiger dot toledo you can stay connected with me on there i have the i actually have my interview with black wealth renaissance video on there now you can watch it it is it's it's lit it's fire it's fire it's fire so let, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. I just want to say thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having me on, man. Shit, it's thank you honor. for being on, man. Like, like it's no. an honor, man. You have you have definitely inspired me to do some some things with my podcast, right? Mm -hmm. It it wasn't until I saw all of the you know how I feel about high levels of distribution. You guys have tapped into the high levels of distribution with your podcast. Um, can you tell a little, the people about what is your podcast about? What's the name of it? Who are you? Give them the introduction, man. Let them know who you are, man, because you're a heavy hitter, man. I know you're a humble dude, but flex, please, because you was flexing on me earlier and shit. <laughs> uh, with, with his remote control, it was zooming in and out and all that. I was like, I ain't got that yet. Here go my zoom right here. Slide <laughs> my chair and shit. But man, uh, appreciate you for having me once again. Uh, like uh, like you said, my name is Jalen Clark. I am one quarter of the Black Wealth Renaissance podcast uh, and just really the Black Wealth Renaissance movement. Um, our podcast is basically what the title says. We speak about creating a generational wealth. We speak about personal finance. We speak about financial literacy. Um, we speak to black entrepreneurs in our community, uh, entrepreneurs who are performing at a high level to give an example to our community that you don't have to just play sports or be a rapper or be an entertainer in order to actually make it, in order to actually establish yourself uh, as someone in this world and as someone in this nation. So. That's what we really focus on, just giving those examples and really giving the tools and resources for you to succeed. What you do with those tools and the, those examples, that's on you. But we're going we're gonna to take you to the lake. We're not going to make you drink, though. Right, right, right. And, and that's important. So you are, you are in Texas right now, but you're originally from N.O. I'm from Louisiana. So I'm from like two hours uh, north of North uh, New Orleans. I'm okay. from a small town called Opelousas, Louisiana. I, I love Louisiana, by the way. That's why, that's actually where I get the, you heard from. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all say, Y'all heard me? I say, I just cut the me part and did it like, You heard? So <laughs> I, I love, I mean, because I, I'm Haitian, right? So the whole atmosphere out there is, you know, French quarters and all of that stuff, you know. They speak Creole out there, which is dope. I, I love it. I love it. Um, how did you get started with the podcast? So now we're going to, it's just me and you, bro. Let's let's rock it out. How did you get started with this whole podcast? How you linked up with the other fellas? Like, walk me through that journey. So like me and David, me and David, uh, we've been friends since the eighth grade. Uh, I ended up moving to the town of Church Point, my eighth grade year, and me and him, we ended up becoming friends. Uh, fast forward, uh, like sophomore, freshman, sophomore year in college, um, David was roommates with Kelly and Jerry, which is the uh, other two members of our uh, team. Um, and after we graduated, David ended up giving me this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which Jared actually forced him to read. He, Jared forced uh, David and Kelly to read this book. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, like I had moved, I, because I was in Dallas 
in 2018 also, but I moved back home and I was in a place like, you know, just post-graduation trying to figure out what, what am I, what's, what am I really going to do with my life? Like what, what, what's really my purpose here? Uh, just moved back to Louisiana. I couldn't really find a job or anything. I read the book and it really changed my perspective just on money and just like on what's really possible. Um, so after that, I got me and David got into wholesaling um, around 2018, around that fall of 2018. Um, mm -hmm. And that whole fall going up into 2019, we're just driving for dollars, going to meetups, like just trying to get a deal and stuff. And we, we really couldn't, for some reason, like we just couldn't get a deal. We'd meet up with a lot of buyers though, like we not not a lot of buyers, a lot of sellers. We'd meet up with a lot of sellers. We inspected a lot of homes and stuff. And right around that time, David and Jared ended up starting Black Wealth Renaissance as an Instagram page. So it was simply just an Instagram page and they were posting like financial literacy things, uh, morning motivational quotes, mm -hmm. um, just really trying to uplift the community uh, by way of social media and bringing some value to it. Uh, and then fast forward 2019, February 2019, me and David, we finally got us a, a property under contract. Uh, it was a like an acre and a half of land and it had a mobile home on it also. Um, so we got it under contract for like 20,000, but at first nobody wanted to touch it. So we went back, we renegotiated, got it dropped down to like 17. But and this, this is the kicker with this piece of land. Like there's one mobile home, but right around like the other lots, there's homes that's built and they're they're worth like 160, uh, two, 2,000, uh, 200,000, like mm. uh, 225,000. So we, we know that, okay, e at least if the mobile home isn't worth it, you at least got this pot of land in like a good area that you can buy pretty cheap, but still nobody was touching it. So David and I were like, okay, we're just going to find us a hard money lender. We both got good credit. We got some, some bread stashed up. Man, we went to Connected Investors. We got a scam, bro. We got a scam. How did you get scammed? So we, we ended up finding a hard money lender. And I forgot the name of that shit. Uh, so this guy, his his name his name was Donald Thompson. I remember the I remember that motherfucking name. I ain't going to lie Donald to you. Thompson, you ain't shit, dude. He ain't shit, man. Um, but I forgot the company or whatever. But he was supposed to be a hard money lender. We submitted all the requirements, everything that we needed. Once again, this is our first go rodeo. Yeah. Like we just trying to get this deal. Like we try. We was like at at worst case, we get this mobile home. We start renting it out to somebody. Like and yeah. Um, but we we get scammed. Like we sit, submitted all those, that information. And then he was like, you know, I need uh, a deposit in order me to, for me to release the funds. And I think it was like $1,500. So we was like, okay, uh, we'll see you this $1,500. But in like, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't feel easy. I didn't feel comfortable about it, but I was just like, I guess this is just how the process goes. Like you gotta put something up in order to get something. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm betting on myself. So, after that, he comes back. He was like, okay, we got the deposit. Now we need to uh, secure the deal or something like that. So he was like, yeah, we're going to need another $2,000 in order to put insurance on the uh, loan and some other bullshit. And that's when that my red flags went off. I was like, yo, David, I don't know about this, bro. I was like, I don't, I don't know if we should send this money. But then David ended up doing some research. He was like, uh, I do see loans are supposed to be like secured and uh, backed or whatever. He was like, so let's just try, let's just try to get this deal done. So we sent the damn $2,000, man. Damn. So after that, we're like, okay, send us our damn money. Like we try to get this deal done. We got like a week left until closing, like send us our money. Dude, come back again on some other bullshit talking about, uh, such and such. This and then. This is what I'm just like. No, man. Send me my motherfucking money back. Like, yeah. Just yeah. send me back what I what I sent you. And like, let's just call this off. It was like, oh, in order for me to re refund it, I need you to send me six hundred dollars. So I'm really getting pissed off at this point. Wow. Man. Yeah, and I'm just like, man. But I don't know who he is. Like, we just found him off of Connected Investors, which we thought was like a credible site. Yeah. So. Like, and around that time, like, we're, we're really just going hard. 
diving deep into uh, the real estate. But while that's going on, David and Jared, they've been working on Black Wealth Renaissance since like October of 20, uh, of 2018 and it started picking up some steam but since me and david are always together driving for dollars working on the real estate stuff we we naturally have the com the conversations about what they're talking about on black wealth renaissance mm -hmm. so uh i tell david i'm like bro like i already i see what this page is doing it's picking up steam i'm like bro let's put the real estate down for a little while and focus on what's actually catching traction so that's when i like end of February, going into March. Um, and I really just came aboard team of Black Wealth Renaissance. Um, moving forward into, so Black Wealth Renaissance started really to pick up steam. Like I said, they started it in 2018, October. By February, they had like 25,000 followers, all organic. Like it was really just because of, like I said, the value, the type of content, the things that they were talking about and the ways that they were using the content, they were finding celebrities actually speaking about like, oh, I've done this type of deal. Um, I was invested into this, like your everyday celebrities that you wouldn't normally see that side of. So mm. maybe like a, a person like Tiger or a person like, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, one, one of our biggest inspirations was, of course, Nipsey Hussle, like just off the strength of how Nipsey was moving and stuff like he talked about the real estate and really just owning a business and how you could leverage this and everything. So we yes. would use a lot of him uh, and Jay-Z and then like Shaq and all of those people. So it really was catching traction because you were seeing the other side of those entertainers and like what they were invested in, how, how they're actually making money for the longevity of like for them and their family. So it gave people, oh, maybe I don't just have to play basketball. Like I see that even though they played, they actually, they, they, they started doing these things on the side. Um, and I remember there was this one video that we, we posted. It was a name. It was, uh, this guy, he was talking about last names and he's like how, you know, uh, this is a last name. Ferrari is a last name. I Bentley. saw that video that you so, guys put it up, that you guys put up. up. It was amazing. We put that up because like it was a repost from Instagram, but Dame Dash ended up reposting that from our page and it had our branding on it. So it was like, oh, shit, man. Like, like there's actually people who starting to like we're getting on these people's radar. Yes, sir. Um, and then, so we would always talk amongst ourselves, uh, David, Kelly, Jared, and I would just have long conversations about building wealth and like really just what's possible because a lot of the people in our area, they, a lot of them were closed minded. They didn't really think that certain things were possible. They had that, uh, that lack, that poverty stricken mindset. So we were like, man, let's just do a podcast because every time someone talks to us, they talk about, oh, y'all, y'all don't talk about the same type of things that norm like that I normally hear. Like, but I, I enjoy conversations with y'all because I learned something that's different. So he's like, man, let's just do a podcast. Fuck it. Let's just start as a podcast. So we ended up March, March of 2019. We ended up launching the podcast. We started with cell phones and like laptops. We didn't know what the hell we was doing, man. Okay. Uh, we just knew we had the Instagram page, and we was like, we're going to talk about this, this, and this. Um, so, like, we started, it started gaining a little traction. Like, I think our first week, we might have had, like, 50 listeners. We was like, oh, shit, like, this is cool. We got yeah. 50 people listening to us. Uh, going into, like, the third week, I think it, like, picked up to, like, 100 listeners or something like that. Um, but the thing that really struck me and what, made me realize that this was gonna be a positive lane was, there's this guy from Bermuda, uh, I'll never forget him. His name is Bira, his, he, his Instagram page was Body by Bira. He reached out to us on our Instagram page. He's like, yo, I didn't know y'all had an Instagram page, but I listened to the podcast and I just want y'all to know that what y'all talking about is, is more than just in, uh, in America, like you're reaching people in the islands of uh, Bermuda. He's like, we're rocking with y'all, man. Keep going. Really? And I was like, I was like, man, the dude from Bermuda. I was like, I ain't never been to no damn Bermuda. Like, I was like, what? So I ended up, we, I ended up reaching back out to him. I was like, hey, man, appreciate you. Like, thank you for letting us know this and everything. But that's whenever I realized, you know, this, this outlet, this platform, 
it was untapped, but what you're able to do with it, it's so much greater than just posting on Instagram or like a social media, like the way that you're able to interact with people, it was a one of a kind interaction. And like people actually felt like they know you, they actually get to, like you said, be a fly on the wall during your conversations. So I was just like, man, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's how Blackwell Further Science and the podcast became to be. Wow. So February, 2018, you guys launched it March 2019 to started picking up some steam. No, so February 2019, we, we launched the podcast in 2019 in March. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that really happened in 2018 was like us reading the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm -hmm. entering our wholesaling journey, and then them launching the pot, the uh. Black Wealth Renaissance Instagram channel. Now I got a question for you. What would you have done differently or what learning lesson did you get from Donald running that scam on you with the whole wholesaling like that you are able to apply in your podcast business? Man, if I don't know, if I can't see you, if I don't know where the hell you at, you ain't getting no damn money. Like, if I'm not getting my product, like, directly, like, a tracking number or something, you ain't getting no damn money from me. But um, just applying it to, like, the podcast, really just to be, like, more cautious, I guess. Um, even, like, with our podcast, there's, there's been a few people that we've had on the show, and they, they've been, we figured out later that there's some scammers. So, like, Interesting. We, still, we've had to learn, like, you know, everyone's not, Everyone doesn't have good intentions. Like there's still people, some wicked people out here. Yes. So we we've we've had to vet people more strictly. Like even with you, I'm pretty sure you remember we made you submit the form. Like that's a way to vet people. We want to make sure. Okay, do you have a website? Like we want to see what are you actually doing before you just come on our platform because the way that our platform has grown, we've grown to a top 100 podcast like we've charted in like number 28 i think is the highest that we've charted but the number 28th podcast on apple business so that's pretty big so we have Very people big. that listen to us so we can't let people take advantage of our listenership and our audience so that's something that we've had to learn just really to start vetting people and really just saying verifying that this is who they say they are Come on, everybody. Let's, let's give them a hand for that right there. They are hitting top 28, and they've only been around for less than two years. Two years. Let's show love. Let's show congratulations. Tell, I'm telling you, like as you celebrate other people's success, success will in turn come to you in your life as well. So I want to say shout out to you. Also, they have reached 1 million, 1 million streams. Is that right? You know what I mean? Like in two years, like you guys is really breaking ground on a lot of things right now. Um, they're on Spotify, they're on Apple, they're on everything right now. You can find them all over the place. And they just recently uh, got on Pandora, which is a big feat right there. So let me ask you a question because you are a notary, right? And mm -hmm. you have a notary agency. If you were to create a podcast around the notary industry, do you feel that it would help your notary business or would it harm it? Oh, I definitely think it would help. Uh, if so? you just started, yeah, if you just started talking about like some of the ways that you can make money in the notary industry, uh, like take our sister Evelyn, she comes on and talks about just signing agents and stuff like that, you'll have so many people who will be interested in what is a signing agent? Like, how can I become one? And if you're a sign, if you're a signing agency, you just created a whole workforce for yourself because you've just sparked the interest of people becoming signing agents off of one podcast episode. Indeed. So now you have a workforce that you can help uh, dispatch money too. So what that is, that's a double-edged sword. You're still giving them value. You're helping them make money now. You educated them about this. Um, then moving forward, maybe they want to do power of attorney like what you specialize in. 
Hey, I got, hey, oh, okay, let me learn more about this power of attorney stuff or let me go get my notary commission. Once again, you can now start dispatching people to start working for you or maybe they want to start building up an agency. We go over just agencies and now you can have people, maybe they want to build an agency. You have the knowledge of how to build an agency. Guess what? You can create a package where, hey, I'll set up your agency for you so you don't have to put in the hard work. Like wow. it's all kind of ways that you can start to monetize and really just build up your business off of that one podcast. Love it. Now, ladies, well, I, I see, I still battle with certain things. I, I got to stop saying ladies and gentlemen. That's one of the things I want to address you guys like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. What Jalen has broken down is like, one, I know for a fact that the notary industry has not even been penetrated with the 21st century type of business model. Technology, bro, like the, the technology that can come into the notary industry is crazy. I'm, try, I'm trying to figure it out right now. Like I'm trying to see what type of piece of technology can be brought over to it. I'm, I'm going to let you go back on to it. But no, you no, know. you're right. You're right, though, because. By you talking about the podcast, uh, like when people come to the notary war room, first, first of all, we don't we don't fuck around over here. And if I offend you with some of my language, jump the fuck off my my platform because I'm going to be me and I want my guests to be themselves as well. But one of the things I want you guys to understand is when you come onto this platform, we want to open your mind to all the possibilities that are out here. That's why I have guests on here like like Renee out in California, she breaking down how she went from uh, zero to 62,000 in, in six months. You'll have tech out in uh, Oakland. He shows you how he automates his system. This is things like these old older notaries have no fucking clue whatsoever how to do. You have Donnie Bryant, which is one of my business coaches. He shows you how to do sales copy. Like, so these are areas and then now we have Jalen is showing you like hey look if you started a podcast do you understand the monetization that you can do and the type of reach that you won't even have to look for notaries the notaries are going to come look for you elaborate on that bro like because people don't understand the way podcasting work because podcasts, they live on the internet. So they're also connected to SEO, search engine optimization. If you create a podcast that's just centered around notar notaries, maybe you might have a podcast that talks about, this is how you become a notary. And whenever someone types in, how do I become a notary? Guess what pops up? Your fucking podcast now. So now you're living on the internet and you're instead of them having to actually sit down and read a blog or anything, they can actually just sit at home, uh, cook them some dinner and listen to yes. you explaining, explaining it to them word by word. Or if they're working out, they're driving, maybe they're a business person, a truck driver like you used to be, and they're fed up with what they've been having to do, leaving their family, going home. You can just drive and listen to all of the different possibilities that can come along with becoming a notary. Uh, and then all, the, all you need is one episode to catch their attention and you provide enough value, they get access to all of your catalog. They get access to everything that you've done before. All they need is one episode to click that inspiration and really just to start clicking that curiosity to what you're speaking about. So, so powerful because it's true. I, I Right now on YouTube, I have probably close to 200, 250 videos on there, right? And to this day, there's videos that I recorded like three years ago that is bringing sales to my Notary Cashflow Academy now. Mm. Like I, I did it three years ago. And it's, it's like duplicating yourself, right? It's ongoing is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People get access to you. If they really like what you're doing, they're going to patronize your business. That's just what it is. So I love it. I love it. So let me ask you this. You guys have a book out, right? Yes, sir. And hey, are you guys going to roll out some volumes of that book? Oh, we sure <laughs> are. We definitely going to roll out some volumes of that book. <laughs> so tell, tell people about that book that you have out right now. I think, how many you got? Like one or two? Uh, we got one book. It's yeah. called Managing Money Like the 1%. So this is our book. 
Uh, it's a step-by-step -step guide to managing your money mm -hmm. um, and really just taking control of your financial uh, journey. So this book isn't going to teach you how to be a millionaire. It isn't going to teach you some groundbreaking uh, thing on just like totally money. But this book is for someone who's living, who's working that nine to five, living paycheck to paycheck. Even if you making a whole bunch of money, but you're still living paycheck to paycheck and you don't understand, you know, where's my money going? You don't really understand the concept of investing and saving for the future. This book would be for you. Um, we talk about uh, how to budget, how to build an emergency fund. We talk about the importance of retirement. We talk about uh, the three different risk factors in investing. So there's low uh, risk factors, medium and high. So we'll go over uh, high risk factors will be like real estate, the stock market, uh, Forex trading, medium risk factors would be like peer to peer lending, uh, buying fractional shares of a stock or maybe purchasing an ETF. Um, low risk factors would be um, maybe like, uh, I'm trying to see, I don't even remember what, what the hell, maybe the ETFs was a low risk factor. Crack over. Oh, bonds and like CDs and okay. things like that are the low risk factors. So we, we go over into how can you figure out and categorize, categorize, okay, I'm comfortable with putting money here, I'm comfortable with putting money there, or things of that nature. Um, so, and we also have a budgeting spreadsheet that uh, goes along with this. So after you read the book, you can actually start tracking your money uh, throughout the year and seeing where, where you're spending your money. Um, we've had people come back to us and they said, you know, after using that budgeting spreadsheet, I realized I was paying like $400 to Uber Eats every freaking month. Wow. So I cut that out. Now I'm able to start saving that money. I actually started cooking at home. Um, some people told us, you know, y'all helped me get my emergency fund up and rolling. Now I'm able to comfortably, if I would like to leave my job and pursue somewhere else, now I can do that. Um, so that's what we got with our book. Um, so this How is can they get that book? You can go on Amazon and buy it. Uh, we have a ebook version. If you go to our Instagram page or if you go to our website, our website is www. I'll put it in here. Yeah, put it in the chat, bro. Renaissance. We got to be smart notaries here. We will give you the tools and the value that you need so you're not dependent on every stamp that you do. Yeah, and that, that's, an, that's like just investing. Even if you have in this, you're, you're able to generate $10,000 a month out of the notary, but like how are you making that money grow after Indeed. that? Like you got to think about your money as soldiers. Your money should be recruiting other soldiers for you every day. Oh. <laughs> you got to deploy your money to go out and recruit your army because that's the only way that you're going to feel safe enough to really just feel independent. Unless you have a solid army behind you, you're not going to feel safe. Hey, yo, you get know? out my office, kid. You in my office, man. I don't know how the hell you got up in my office. Like, I literally, I, I kid you not, dude, I talk the money and shit. Like, I, I, I will have like a $100 bill and be like, Hey, motherfucker, you need to go out there and recruit some of these other bastards to come back into our bank account. All right? Go! <laughs> I, like, literally talk the money and tell money to go out there recruit. And you said they need to be recruiting more soldiers. Oh, that's crazy. I thought I was... I lost no, my mind like, when I like, did that. Your, your money should be like your soldier in your army, and they should protect you and your family. Like, unless you become financially free and financially independent, it's not going to happen. Um, and like I said, this is just the first uh, installment. Once again, it's not going to teach you some crazy tactic how to make money. Uh, it's going to help you get started on your journey. We're going to have our second installment called, so it's manage your money, invest your money like the 1%. So we'll go a little bit deeper into investing Love and it. really different strategies and tactics of how you can grow your money. And then the last installment of this series will be called protect your money like the one percent so mm. we'll also be talking about estate planning and ways to actually uh set up trust in ways that you can uh help with like taxes tax benefits ways that you can really just stretch out your money and really start playing the, the game the way that the big players the people the rockefellers so you can pass that money down from this generation to the next five six generations to come and, and and 
here's the thing too, as notaries, um, because we're on the notary war room, that helps out a lot because you're better, you can better educate your customer on the, how powerful these documents are, right? Uh, for instance, like you mentioned the trust, how it protects properties, investments, and it helps out the family in the long run because there's a lot of people that may do a power of attorney with you, but mm -hmm. they don't understand the next few steps. There's many, many times that I would have a power of attorney client and I say, hey, do you realize that this power of attorney uh, dissolves after the person expires or makes their transition to glory, right? And then they'll be like, oh no, I did not know that. Well, yeah, yeah. that's what happens. Once that person makes their transition, that power of attorney is it's, it deactivates, it. right? So what comes into place after that? The will, the trust, the trust. right? So it, you can better serve your clients. It just helps them out so much and it helps out their family because a lot of this information doesn't get spread around the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So, and even just even just like with general understanding that the need for general life insurance, like mm -hmm. breaking down, understanding a lot of people don't even know how much coverage they should need, like taking in the fact that, you know, how much is your mortgage? If you have kids, if they're going to go to school, what's the projected average of how much is it going to take to put them to, through school? You're going to have a spouse. You got all of these other bills. How long will it take for your spouse to rebound? 12 months, two years? You want to take into account all of those things, but not understanding and having a personal relationship with your finances is going to keep you down and is going to keep you from reaching the next level. And uh, we understand that, you know, sometimes it's not just about, oh, budgeting to save Sometimes you can't budget your way out of certain situations. Mm. So sometimes you have to actually increase your cash flow. So sometimes you have to understand I need to add value to myself and to whoever I'm coming into contact with. I can't be just flipping burgers and fries thinking that I'm going to get rich. You're not adding value to nobody. All you got to do is sit there and push a damn button. Nobody, you you can be replaced any damn time, like by Very a true. high schooler. That's not value. But whenever whenever you come into a position like Miss Evelyn said, this guy just starting his title company, you, you're a signing agent. You can take care of all of the things that he needs. Guess what? Now you're a person of value because if he's if you're not able to sign that title or that escrow document, there's no transaction being going on. So yeah. now you're a valuable person. So sometimes you can't just manage your money out of certain situations. Sometimes you actually have to increase your cash flow. Ooh, you dropping heat today, man. Good luck. Here. He, what, man, what they put in that that in that cup, man. You you must got a Starbucks too. You on fire, baby. I'm on water, man. <laughs> oh shit. Well, I'm on Starbucks, goddammit. Shit, you dropping that heat. Are you guys getting value out there? I hope so. Type in yes, yes, if you are getting value from this conversation going down. Type in yes, yes. Thank you, Mickey Williams. Appreciate Thank you. you. Yes, yes. Lanice, yes, yes. Team Toledo, yes, yes. Tech, yeah, man. Look. Appreciate it. I'm so glad I can just spread this, this information. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're, we're trying to create the Navy SEALs of notaries here, Jalen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want a lot of people on this platform. I don't want a lot of people coming into the... I want to create some apex warriors so they are at the top of the food chain and mm. you could dish out the work right mm. i'd rather dish out the work than to have the work dished out to me you know mm. so getting your credit right getting your financing right um getting working capital to grow your notary business understanding where you're going to invest this money once it really starts coming into your business all of that stuff is necessary for you to be the rise of the smart notary. Like that, that's what rise of the smart notary is. Like I said before, no one grows up and says, when I grow up, I want to be a notary. Nobody says that. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a means to an end. You're, you're not going to get paid for your passion. My passion is to sit on a Caribbean island sipping pina colada and shit. Nobody's paying me for that. You know what I mean? So I have to do... A, I have to bring value to the public with the notary business. I get the funding. 
disperse it on different type of investments and then I could do what I want to do. Mm. So that's what Black Wolf yeah. Renaissance is doing. That's what Jalen is bringing to the table today. And it's it's fire, man. I really appreciate it. I was looking forward to this shit for a minute too. So hey I just man, say I appreciate that. it, my brother. And I kind of want to go into one more thing. Like, like you're talking about the working capital. Um, uh, that's that's another thing that we talk about, like just with business and entrepreneurship, like building business credit. Yes. A lot of times we don't understand and the options that's out there. Um, just with you having a legitimate business that gives you the option so that you can build up a profile and start tapping into real capital that you can start really start doing some things with. So like you could take the money that you're making with your from your notary business and you can start to build you a business credit profile. So once you know you have your EIN and you have your uh, use filed with your secretary of state, you maybe have your uh, LLC escort, anything like that. We talk about actually becoming lendable to these people. So after that, you want to go get your Dun and Bradstreet number, your DMV, and that's basically like your credit profile for your business. That's going to be like uh, the people instead of Equifax and Experian and everything. That's going to be that for your business. Your Dun and Bradstreet number um, and your EIN. EIN you can look at that as your Social Security number for your business. Um, so that's how they're going to track everything. But once you get that, you want to start to uh, you want to get listed in the 411 directory so that you actually see incredible your business is able to be uh, found. Then after that, you want to set up your business bank account. You don't want to just be out here moving all crazy. So you actually want to have a business bank account so you're able to separate the funds, your personal funds versus your business funds. Because if not, that's called commingling of funds. Mm -hmm. And now you're able to be liable for if anyone ever was to want to sue your business, your personal assets are now liable too because you mix both of those funds up. So we need you to set up a business bank account and push all of your business money through there. Even if you have to fund it personally, you can still deposit money into your business bank account, but don't use any of your business bank account for personal reasons. Mm. So after that, you want to set up that business bank account. Um, then you want to make sure that you have an actual uh, business number. Google Voice is okay, but you actually want to have like an actual uh, phone number, a business number like Grasshopper, uh, something like, uh, I forgot the other one. There's Bonage, like, Bonage, uh, like a 1 800 something yeah. special. Like you, you want to make sure you have that business number set up. After you have that business number set up, you want to make sure you have an online presence with your website. It doesn't have to be nothing too fancy. Like just set you up a one page website where someone can be found, where someone can find you anytime they want to uh, search you. Um, after that, you uh, so I said the business, the bank account, the Email. Oh, email address. You want to um, you want to get you a legitimate email address Indeed. that goes to at your company dot com instead of at Gmail dot com. Just so once again, it's another level of legitimacy, another level that makes you look more professional uh, to lenders. After you set up all of those things, then you want to uh, you want to go apply for what's called 30 day net accounts. These 30 day net accounts, anytime and I'm you're dropping sure, some heat. Yo, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen these, these books come through like Granger, Uline, Quill, any of things like that. You want to go start, start up an account with those people and you want to start ordering from them. It's going to be a, a minimum that you're going to have to order from them. It might be like $100, $200, and you're going to have to start doing this, do it like two, three months. But what is what's that going to do is that's going to start building up that business credit. They're going to give you they're going to loan that out to you for 30 days. You have 30 days to pay up on that bill. Um, it doesn't matter. Like the sooner you pay it, uh, the more the sooner you get it off your back. But as long as you pay it within those 30 days, they'll start reporting. Hey, this person is actually reporting positive credit. Then you move up to a 60 day net account. Then you move up to a 30 day net account. After you do that. Then you'll start getting offers from places offering you like business credit cards, fuel cards, 
things of that nature, and you can start using those to propel your business. Once again, if you're a mobile notary, why should you spend your own money? Get your fuel card to power your business. Indeed. So now you can start anytime you're going on this, this uh anytime you're going on a signing or you're going to do something for a notary, now you're able to swipe. You can get this business credit to pay for your gas. But guess what? You're also able to deduct those from your, to deduct those miles from your taxes if you get your fire CPA, like they gonna hook you up. Like now you're able to really start reaping the benefits of operating as a big business. So once you start hacking into like these small accounts, you'll start getting the, the offers for larger accounts. And now you can really start funneling it in. Maybe you might want a team where you have a location and maybe you can pay for your, your rent starting out that way off of a business uh, line of credit, off of just building up that profile. And I know I just said a mouthful. We actually have a podcast on this and we actually done a webinar on building business credit. Um, and I sent the link earlier. Um, you can access that through uh, that link. Um, but man, that, that's some of the things that we're trying to teach people about business, understanding that you don't have to just really go for, be broke and live paycheck to paycheck with it. Like once you really start creating a legitimate business, uh, getting money pumping through your business bank account and start taking advantage of these 30 day net accounts and stuff like that. You can really start building up and leveraging your business credit And the way that I just spoke about. That would be all upon your business. No personal guarantee. It takes mm. a little bit longer. It's about a six, seven, six to seven, eight month process. But once you start to build it up and you do it the right way, you're not personally responsible for that. There are ways to get business credit where you personally guarantee it and it will go on your personal record and it'll also be linked to your business. But the way I just told you, that's all strictly on your business and not on you. Wow. See, I, I, I'm going to definitely have to hit the replay on this because you dropped hella gems on this one, bro. Um, yeah, because a lot of people don't realize how important working capital is, right? Mm -hmm. And to sustain yourself, and especially if you are looking to grow your business onto a whole nother level. Like I had to tap into working capital many times to take my agency to a whole nother level, whether it was marketing, whether mm -hmm. it was hiring personnel, um, you know, hiring somebody, a, a virtual assistant for SEO, whatever that case was, I needed the working capital. I didn't, I didn't want to tap into my own personal funds because what if it didn't work out, right? So at least with the working capital, it gave me a cushion to be able to take those necessary risks to see if it hurt. All I need is one. All I needed yep. to do is pop once and then I could just continue it and 10X that. So, oh man, I love that. So that website that you gave us, let me see if I could click on there. I'm pulling it up and then I'm gonna share the screen so you guys can check it out. Um, I'm gonna put it in the chat and right now. Everyone who's on here right now, y'all get 40% off, off of anything that's on our site. Oh man, that's dope, dude. What in the book? The book is on there, so y'all can get forty percent off to the book. It'll be just the ebook. So, do they need to enter anything with that? Yeah, uh, as long as they use the link that I sent, uh, that no need to enter anything. It'll give it to you automatically. I just entered the uh, put the link in the chat. Here's the I site, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Love it, man. Look at that black wealth, baby. Oh, damn, that shit would fly. Okay. Credit fundamentals. Okay. We got the podcaster's playbook. I need that. I need that personally. You know what I mean? You said 40% off? Yes, sir. Take advantage of that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you're investing in yourself at the end of the day. You're also got a free webinar for the podcast. If you don't want that. to invest the full, the full that money, you can get a little taste of what's in the course from the webinar. But I promise you, the course got a whole lot more than what that webinar got. I need that right there. Um, yeah, you got the book on here. Yeah, take advantage of this stuff. 
again, we're 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 creating the Navy SEALs of this notary business. We can't we can't do what everybody else is doing. Then we're going to get the same results as everybody else, right? So we have to take advantage of these these situations. Oh, also tomorrow mm -hmm. we have uh we we're having a webinar with our personal CPA and she's going to be talking about business taxes, uh, taxes and stuff like that. So if you are a business owner, that's really, really important, really critical. We'll be talking about important deadlines, um, withholding taxes and different things like that, things that you need to know as operating as a business owner. So definitely tune into that tomorrow night if you can also. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Register for that. View webinar free. Love it, man. Yeah, these, this the crew right here. This the crew right here. Shout out to you guys, man. Love it. Appreciate so you it, guys have the link on there. T tell tell the audience what, what do you have on the horizon um, for Black Wealth Renaissance, yourself, personally, your personal brand? Like, what, what's going on? What do you have in store? Well, on the horizon, as you can see, you, you see BWR Academy. Uh, we will be releasing a full-on uh, community within the uh, latter part of this quarter of this year. So it's going to be uh, the first part of the community, which is going to be focusing on the personal finance side. So we're trying to help everyone get right with their sales, personal finance, uh, with the personal finance. Um, but the community, you're going to be able to pay into it. We're going to have a savings challenge. Uh, we're going to get people right with their debt, try to figure out how you can eliminate your debt, the best way that you can do that, um, and really just giving out extreme value and just creating a community of where people can be felt and understood. Like if you're going through some type of messed up situation, hey, it's okay. It's a lot of people in this same group that's going through this, but we're going to get through it together. Um, so we're just trying to create that type of community. Um, and besides that, we also have some more courses on the horizon. We're going to talk. We have another course uh, talking about how to build and monetize a social media following. As I said earlier, we do have we have 400. I'll tell you, like 441,000 followers on our Instagram. Damn. Um, we, we made over $100,000 off our Instagram last year. So we're going to be talking and teaching ways that you can do that. Um, and really, we have another one, a uh, course on stock investing for the long haul. A lot of people talking about trading right now, but we're talking about finding these valuable companies that you can hold for five, seven years that's really going to generate you some wealth in the long run whenever you get ready to retire or anything like that maybe you got kids you might need to put some money out in the future we'll be uh talking about how you can find these great growing companies also wow wow well you have it well Jalen you know I could talk to you all day man real talk <laughs> this was everything I hoped it would be and more so I appreciate you bringing in the heat bringing the value, really just sharing everything with the, the audience. Um, let's see if we could go into a quick Q&A um, with everybody. If you guys have any questions or you would like to go on live, you could type it in the chat or we can go on live and, um, you know, chop it up real quick, man. Chop it up real quick. I love it. Yeah. I want to so, say thank you again for having me, man. Appreciate everyone for tapping in and listening to uh, what I just had to say. I hope y'all were able to find some value in it. I just hope that I'm able to just connect and just at least help one person every every day in my life. That's just that's something that I tell myself every day. I wake up. How can I be valuable? How can I help someone else? So as long as I just reach some just one person, that's gonna be uh, okay with me. Nice. You got a lot of fire emojis on here, man. A lot of people said fire stuff, man. Fire, fire. Um, business phone number is crucial. Um, they said Miss Bit Miss Business is legit. Is, is that your tax accountant? Yeah, that's the C that's our CPA. Her name is Miss Business. Mm -hmm. They said valuable information. Okay, um, we got a question here. If you're starting out. Should you start YouTube or podcast, or should you focus just on one platform? Okay, so Good question. Good question. So that is a great question. Um, so 
Podcasting and YouTube, they're different, but they also can overlap. So the difference between a podcast and a YouTube, with YouTube, everything is going to live on YouTube. You still got great searchability, great SEO on YouTube, but everything is going to live on YouTube. With a podcast, you have what's called an RSS feed. And whenever you host a podcast, your RSS feed is shared with your subscribers, and now they're able to download that. So they don't need to be connected to the internet in order to tap into your show, because with the RSS feed, whatever player they go through, they go through maybe they go through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, whatever player they go through, whenever they subscribe to that RSS feed, every time you publish something new, it'll automatically download it for them. So now they're able just to listen to it on the go and instead of actually having to be on YouTube. But if you're starting your podcast, YouTube is a great place for you to market it and grow to another another audience. Like with us, we do have, we have videos on YouTube, but we also upload as a podcast. Um, and you can have one where you can just rip the audio and you can do both. It's not gonna be as difficult of you thinking that you have to focus on these two things. You can get your editor to edit the videos if you're not the best on it. Um, but I definitely would suggest, uh, it doesn't matter which one you start off with, but if you're going to go with a podcast, um, that one, you're able to have it remotely. They can do it on, on air or off air. Now, there's a company that you guys use. I forgot. It starts with the letter A, wh where you use for your RSS feed. What, what company is that? Anchor. Uh, Anchor.fm. Anchor. But once again, I go over all of that in the course. Everything I go over the type of uh, equipment. Yes. I go over the microphones, uh, the headphones. I go over how to monetize, how to market your podcast, uh, how to really cultivate a strong listening. Um, I go over I go over it all in the uh, in the course, um, and it is a living course. So as we grow and as we learn, I will be adding to that course and. If you do purchase right now, I am doing a raffle for podcasters entering. It's a podcaster starter pack uh, where we'll be raffling off a microphone, headphones, and a, a microphone arm. So I'm trying to help, once again, trying to give that value, trying to get you started in the most professional way possible. So you get uh, anytime you purchase right now up until the end of March, you get entered into that raffle. And again, which, which course is it? That course is called the Podcasters Playbook. That would be this one here. Okay, that's this one here, ladies and gentlemen, the Podcasters Playbook. And he's given 40% off on that. Uh, so yeah, it's that's that's dope. I'm I'm gonna definitely take because it's because of you guys with your checklist. I was able to do what I'm able to do now with the microphone, the the proper lighting uh before you released your checklist. I had a lot of echo in the background. Now the audio is much, much better. Um, the visuals is better as well. So, I mean, I, I'm a student of what you guys do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, At the I'm end of the day. The checklist was able to help you. Yes, yeah, you, you definitely have. Um, let's see, we had another question here. Um, Mickey said she would like more info on getting local business. Hmm. Um, so, any what, suggestions? Uh, are you a uh, you a local notary? One of the best ways to get local business is through Google uh, Google Places. Get on Google Places, but you can also uh, get on Yelp. You can mm -hmm. get on uh, Bing. Bing yep. is also another directory. Um, there's one more that hey, that's get on all the platforms, right? Get on notary notarycafe.com, go on one, two, three notary, go on notary rotary, um, Yelp, Bing, Yahoo, uh, Google, Google My Business. Heck, if you got time, if you're going, if you're going to the supermarket or you're getting something to eat and you see a nursing home, just knock on their door and introduce yourself. Say, hey, I'm a notary. And now one thing about nursing homes is that they do a lot of power of attorneys. Introduce yourself. Just say, hi, I, my name is Miki and I'm a notary. And I know you guys get a lot of power of attorneys done. Here's my business card. I'd love to help you and your clients if you ever need a notary. They don't have notaries on staff because of the liability that's attached to it. So that'll definitely help out. 
and, and you know, again, get out of the comfort zone, right? Yeah. Um, do some things that you're uncomfortable with so you can Pick really phone. make an impact. Okay? Pick up the phone. Like, and that's something that I started doing last week. Like I said, I was marketing for my fingerprinting, but I'm still marketing to like uh, nursing homes and stuff. So I was also saying, you know, I, I also provide on-site mobile notary services. Uh, they're like, oh yeah, we definitely would need that. Come drop off some cards. So it's yeah. still, I'm getting two, two in one. Yeah, and Tech in Oakland said another great thing. He said Thumbtack. Thumbtack is another really good way of getting business. Um, register with Thumbtack. Uh, another one, uh, Snapdocs. Uh, check out Snapdocs. Check out Notary Go. Uh, just now use my call script because a lot of these cats, they be trying to rip notaries off and lowball you guys. And I don't want you guys selling your services for dirt cheap. You know, I show you guys how to maximize your pay with that $250,000 call script. Use that shit. Trust me. Yeah, because they, they, like Notary Go, they will try to get you to sell your firstborn, your your your, your great-grandfather's burial site for $40. So yeah. don't go for that. We, we don't do that here. Um, no. Let's see here. Um, yeah, thumbtack and all that. Good looking tech. Uh, any last words, brother? Nah, my brother, once again, I just want to say thank you, man. Uh, my boy David just walked in here. Oh, David we... Bellard, come on through, baby. What up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you know I gotta get you on the show next, man. Don't be running, man. Hey, it is what it is, my hey. brother. I, I see you got the book bag on and shit like you about to go rob something, man. <laughs> nah, actually, uh, so we're actually also working with Kingsford. Uh, we're doing this this deal where uh, it's called Preserve the Pit, and it's for grill masters. Anyone who's a grill master, they're helping them uh, create a legitimate business, take them through a mentorship yeah. and things like that. So we're actually about to go meet with this local barbecue spot, wow. uh, talk to them and interview them. So, yeah, man, yeah, we, we are doing it. it, man. I love it. Dude, I'm a fan. I don't care what anybody say. I'm just a fan. I love what you guys are doing. How does podcast? You guys are almost at half a million viewership in like less than two years. That is crazy. You know, a million streams. Yo, again, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just give them a round of applause, man. They, these brothers are doing this their thing. They invest in. They're helping people invest, putting them onto game helping them build this generational wealth. It is what it is, man. So peace, love, and happiness to all you guys, man. I really appreciate you, Jalen. David, we need to connect, baby. Yeah, my brother, I, I'm going to see you in number. I'm about to text you. Man, I think text me, man. Text me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then we will talk soon, man. Peace and love and, and cash flow to all you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.